guys. Um, sorry about all my videos. What do you think? Okay. Um, I just wanted to um, share how um, I was able to kind of simplify things. How where to start to read the Bible? Because um, I miss saying that at the beginning because I got cut off uh, sometimes because of my phone. You know. Uh, out of storage or somebody comes in because it's a shared accommodation so um, the Bible being said I'm always careful with my Bible I don't want anybody putting on top uh, anything on top of my Bible this is just a new Bible for me um, I've always used my mom's Bible but now I kept it you know I have to have my own I'm always referring it to my mom's Bible I mean it's time for me to have my own so um, this is from a garage sale that I quickly landed on my lap I wanted to have one and it's a um, it's a King James um, version, I believe. Otherwise, yeah, I won't read it if it's not King James version. Okay, so um, having said that, um, it's really important that we know how to read it. I did a research on it, and I, you know, I follow a few teacher. I don't think they're pastors, or they might be pastors, or their their parents are pastors, but they're teachers, right? They're teaching the the teaching of Jesus, right? The teaching of. Uh, you know why Christ came you know why what's the Christ meaning why is it you know what are we uh, being saved for right so it's important that we read the Bible um, as a whole unit and also he will speak to us in our times of troubles and if that's true because I have witnessed that during times of distress you know I would just put my hand just like the, uh, uh, every Christian would you know teach you um, you, you will, you know, you'll find ways that God is connecting to you, and you'll find answers there. Any problem, the answer is there, right? But the thing is that I have realized now, learning how to uh, read the Bible, is that you cannot read one um, par a parable here, or um, you know, uh, in the Scripture. It's a, it's like integrated, just like the body, right? Because the this contains the truth. Anything that happened bad also um is in here so if you're just reading that portion and then you know and then you're gonna start uh preaching it then it's gonna be a misdeed and you can't do that it's a sin you have to know and before you start preaching this i tell people i'm i'm a sinner and i'm i'm, I'm a nobody uh, but i know this fact that's why i want to share especially this for my children if i date more especially with the covid i mean there are so much things I haven't told them that they need to know the skills of life. I mean, my kids, I raised like strong women, but I don't know if they're physically strong. Can, you, can they, how are they gonna, um, you know, I put pain in them growing up, but can they be able to handle the pain of if this is a God's wrath? I wanna save them, you know, I wanna save especially my children and the people that I love. But the whole part, I love everyone. I love you. I love everyone. There's nobody here that I don't love. In the meaning sense, not that romantic love or not, you know, that blood love, right? I love my blood differently, obviously, especially my children. And no matter what, I, you get mad at them, but, you know, who, who, who does it, right? That's part of, like, you know, and at the end, if you just see the end of all of these sufferings, of, of having a family, of being a mother, all the pains and sorrow, there's joy even with this pain and sorrow, right? Raising them. But at the end of the tunnel, like you'll see that if you can see that, you will take this gracefully. Children will be children. My children gave me problem too. So having said that, um, I want them to know that, you know, they know how to save themselves. Not save in the sense of being alive as well. Of course that too. But when you die, right? This is a question you need to know yourself. When you die, where are you gonna go, right? Are you safe? Safe from what? You know all those questions. But there's that first thing that really, really bothering me because I've never really uh, questioned myself this in such a depth, right? Like if I die today, right? This next second where am i going to be saved it's really important for me to know it's just that that is where my heart wanted to go all along and that's why i understood now why i said no to many 
uh, especially if they don't have God in them, especially, but if they have God in them, there's a chance that they'll, they'll have Jesus, right? But if they don't have God, have God in them, still they don't have them. Because you're weak. They have people that could help them. You might be dragged down and you don't want that. No matter how um, prestigious this man is, or woman he is, or no matter how um, beautiful, beautiful she is, or handsome he is, right? No matter how much money, stability he can give you, the name, power, stability, none of those equals. None of those equal that um, to love Jesus. I can't live again in this life. There's one point that I lost him for at some point. He's shaking my life right away. Right away shaking it. He doesn't want to lose me. And that's how that's how it is when you um accepted him. Right away, you're not gonna fall into a deeper sin. The moment you sin, he's gonna shake you. Go back. <laughs> Go back. Turn your face towards God. Because that's that's his aim, that's why he did. So we cannot be ashamed to please God. And that's the purpose of you know of that. So reading the Bible is really, really important factor that we should use it as tool. It's the best tool in life that I did not cherish fully. I didn't nourish fully. Whereas I have that tool. I grew up in that setting. My mom tells me my aunts and aunts and nurse are still alive and I love them to death because they um they forced me to go to these public classes. I would not know Jesus at an early age. But being an adult, my guilt, my regret is I didn't nourish it. I read other books derived from the Bible. I listened to a lot of sermons because I'm busy trying to put food on the table. Then I was idolizing. Idolizing that money that will sustain me and my children, which is wrong. Which is so wrong. If I could have placed him first, my children would have been in a better position. My children are in a good position right now. But they would have been in a better in terms of that if I die today, my kids are they going to see God? Are they going to be face to face with God? Because that's supposed to be my aim, is bringing those few children. And if they die, I don't know if they're going to be their creator or not. It's my biggest, biggest mistake in life. Being alive, I am um, um, considered a fake tree. I'm useless. I should be born and be dead. Really, if I can't have my true children saved, Especially what's happening with this, uh, we don't know what's happening. Could be a gas run, like I said, could be, we don't know. And it's really important that I want to be saved, right? And I, that's the reason why I'm having that yearning, and I wanted to share this. I grew up, I was born November 7, 1971, right? Um, I was born in uh, Manila, Philippines, I'm not sure where. I, but in my uh, birth certificate, Santa Ana. I don't have the exact address, but it's in Santa Ana, Manila. And Santa Ana is kind of a little congested, but it's a little community. And um, during um, my marriage days, um, I I took nursing, which ended up uh, uh, me taking business, right? At the end, I discarded it and I switched to accounting and I said, no, um, I'm going to switch to business. So I took nursing. Um, when I was already married, I didn't have kids yet, and um, it's around that area. And I, I have a friend who lived there, so it became again. It's like my my area. So I lived, uh, I lived there um, as a kid. I have no recollection of it. Um, I have nobody to tell me what happened um, during those times. But from I believe seven, um, I have a glimpse. No, five, I have a glimpse of things, and seven, I would, I can tell. Right, but it's just because my mom's life was really like, like um, like a block. Like it's not really uh, constant. It's been um, a bumpy uh, road for her. Um, and and you know my grandmother would tell me I was so close with my grandmother more than my mom. She would tell me, "Well, because your mom is, you know, she always disrespect me. She always this. She's always the." the rebel, you know, and, you know, she didn't, she, she was such a snob, she didn't want any, anything to do with any man in, in, in that, in 
thing she wanted the best she wanted the best of the best right my dad my dad was and my mom as well so how they met was uh, my dad spotted her uh, she was waiting on the bus he's well to do so he's probably in a car he was an engineering student uh, my mom didn't really finish high school she has to go to manila manila because she's from um Pangasinan. she's a rebel so she couldn't handle her mother so she left that was the story and they met and i you know from a little bit pieces of stories from my aunts and my uncles you know they fell in love and my dad me right and then you know i guess they separated and my mom run away and, and hide me away and my dad followed um me and you know my my mom my mom has that oh if it's meant to be it's meant to be if he follows me then you know then it's meant to be so um i'm gonna cut this video i'll tell you the story it's interesting uh, later on but having said that um the bible was not really in depth uh, a yearn or a yearning uh, for me at that time uh, i have the hunger for it when I became pregnant with Catherine, um, so all my plans of escaping Manila because I was detained uh, in the Philippines uh, against my will, um, I was going to expose everything to the media so I can get back to Canada because I need to take care of my sister So at that point. But that led me to not being close to her. Maybe it helped her to be strong as well. So And then I become the uh, uh, weak. I was always crying. always. You know, I couldn't handle the fact, but I have Catherine, and I, you know, God is really good. Imagine, right? And Catherine became my world. 